imagine it chatting to a chimp in chimpanzee. Imagine talking to a tiger, chatting with a cheetah. What a neat achievement it would be. If we could talk to the animals, learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. We'd study elephants and eagles, buffalo and beagle, alligator, guinea pig and flea. Talking lions aren't supposed to be able to talk. Don't be ridiculous, Tommy. We're, we're not really lions. We're just pretending. We're pretending to be lions. I wish you had told me before. But why? Because I, I mauled a couple of stagehands. Okay? I hate the producer. Yeah. Julie! Mm. I must tell you, I feel absolutely humiliated in this costume. I'm I mean, so sorry. not even a little scout's cap for my helmet here. Oh. I mean, the last time I did the show, I wore tails. That's true. I mean, you certainly know how to hurt the most attractive person I know. <laughs> you stop it! Anything I can't stand is an hysterical doctor. Oh, Judy! Yes, you can. <laughs> to say something over there. You were bursting to talk. I just wanted to suggest that we leave. There are animals. That's true. I think it's better that you all go back to your cages. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 
excuse me, thank you. Now, all go back to your cages and change this. <laughs> star is hard to come by. Those who have it remain stars for a long time. Well, two of my guests tonight certainly fill both descriptions. They are unique and they are stars. The brothers Smothers, Tom and Dick. much. My brother would like to sing now with myself accompanying him the unique and interesting 17th century magical as only my brother can sing in his, origi in his unique and individual original 17th century tenor lyric voice singing Once Goest Thou Foul Maiden. No, no, that's not singing. Once Goest Thou Maiden, but when with the foul weather goest, you come as, come as maiden. Well, that's it. Of a maiden in need of a sweetheart, here's one who is anxious to please. It's a shame that a handsome young fellow like me should be left lost tonight in the seasons to tree. Short February is none I can stand. 
You understand? Well, I just want Light to... and delicate. Just in the woods and the meadow beneath the pale moon Every lad and his lass make the most of the June Don't you think, dearest, Nathan, you'd better to pick up the tree When there's two in the bush, there's a bird up your tree I must admit that we have a confession to make, too. Huh? Don't, don't we, Tommy? Yeah, but why don't we let her make her confession first? <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I, I'd always heard that you two were kind of difficult to work with, you know, that you were kind of troublemakers. And? Oh, oh, well, after working with you this week, I must say that you're both adorably sweet, normal people, and not what I was led to believe at all, really. Oh. Oh, gee, thank you. Thank you very much. Isn't that great, Tommy? Yeah. And, you know, you tell her uh, what she... Your turn. Your turn to confess. Tell her what you have to say. Well... Now look her in your arm, Tommy. Uh, Julie, um, I was under the impression all the time that, that you were cold and aloof and a, a goody-goody. And? 
I just wanted to confess that. We'll take a station break and be right back. You know. May I help you? Um. Yes, I'm meeting somebody. Yes, of course. Would you follow me, please? Um. Is this the only table available? Well, if you're meeting three friends, I have a table for four. But if you're meeting only one, you'll have to sit here. Oh, fine. Thank you. Would you care for a cocktail? Oh, well, I'm not much of a drinker. Uh, do you have whiskey here? <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. With the soda and ice? No, just the plain, thank you. <laughs> I didn't hear anybody say take five. <laughs> Take five. Not that five. Need a little for the help. May I join you? Well, I, uh, I didn't realize I was falling apart. Oh, that's humor. That's refreshing. If you don't mind, I happen to be waiting for someone. No, I don't mind. Uh, why don't I just sit here and keep you company until, uh, he arrives. Hey, how about it? How about my song, huh? Yeah. I think your fan club is waiting. Yes. Coming in on a wing of the prayer. You promised me you'd play Coming in on a wing of the prayer. You promised me you'd play. <laughs> the devil is in love with war songs. Thank you. Thank you. And whiskey. Thank you. Anything for you, Mr. Miles? No, Eddie, I'll just sit here and drink in the beauty of this lovely creature. Oh, come on. Now, look here. My name is Harry Miles. In case you didn't see the sign outside, you must have seen it. The many styles of Harry Miles. It has a nice little ring to it. I don't think the photograph of me is too good, though. I think I'm much more attractive in person, don't you? I mean, I don't think that photographer, he, he didn't really catch that, that mad twinkle in my eye, that devil may care of my smile. Look, I'm not used to being accosted by a perfect stranger. Well, that's sweet of you to say that. I'm not really perfect, though. I... I have a small birthmark on my shoulder. I'd show it to you, but we're not permitted to go topless in here. Ah, uh -huh. you see, you can smile. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the world smiles with you. Donald. If you hold it down, I promise I'll sing a song for you later. I don't want you to sing. No. I'd just like you to play. I drove from Pasadena to hear you play. <laughs> May I ask you uh, why you're here? Well... No, wait, wait. Don't tell me. I'll tell you. A group of the girls at the office said you must go down and catch that sparkling, that enchanting personality of Harry Miles, who's... King of the keyboard and holding sway here at the Boom Boom Room. And you, you tenacious, inquisitive devil, you couldn't avoid coming down here and seeing it all to be true. Correct? Wrong. I see. Now, Count Basie never ever left the bench in the middle of a set. That's why he's where he is, and you're where you are. Could I have a second guess? You, uh, you had a fight with your husband. Right? Right. Uh-huh. I thought so. Must be a real heel, sweetheart. Mm. Yes, he is that. Yes. A real stinkeroo, probably, right? <laughs> but he's a bit of a dummy, too. Excuse me. All right. All Think right. about that Count Basie one. <laughs> you come here to the right place, lady. You come here to lose the blues. Just let Harry Miles fill you with smiles. Let me ask you, Mr. Miles, what would you think of a man who forgets his fifth wedding anniversary? Any man who forgets any anniversary should be keelhauled. You bet your watermelon. <laughs> you know, I... Accused him of taking me for granted and 
Well, we had a fight. We had our first really big fight, and he stormed out of the house, and he said he was going to work. He said he was going to work. Uh-huh. And you came here, huh? Well, this calls for a celebration. Eddie! Listen, I... Please. I love celebrations. Yes. I haven't had a celebration since J.B. Day. <laughs> Send him a note and tell him it's VJ Day. I heard what you said. He's got ears bigger than his mouth. A bottle of Coudin Rouge 67, please, Eddie. Huh? I, I really don't think... No, 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 no. I don't want you to ever think again. Just let Harry Miles do all the thinking. Right now, it's so for melancholy, baby. Uh, listen, if you're, uh... If you're unhappy with this clown you're living with, why don't you just pack up and leave him? Well, that's sort of hard. You see, uh, I happen to love him. Oh. Love is a man is splendid. Herbert, would you knock it off with just a beat? Thanks very much. You love better with a piano for it. Mm -hmm. I'd ask him to leave, but he happens to be my dentist. <laughs> Smell the bouquet of that pure raspberry. It's a perfect champagne. You know, you're quite a connoisseur. Oh, not only of wine, but uh, beautiful women, too. Come on, don't, please. I'd like to propose a toast, if I may. Um, fine wines, beautiful women. I'd also like you to know that I don't take advantage of marital strife. But if you would, I get off here in about 15 minutes. Mr. Miles, are you married? Yes, I am married. Ironically enough, my wife and I had an argument this morning. See, I have a problem. My wife doesn't... Doesn't uh, understand you? It's very deceptive of you, yes. It's, it's true. She doesn't realize she's married to an artist. I mean, I'm a pianist, but I'm not always going to spend my life playing in this cocktail lounge. You're not even playing now, buddy. I... <laughs> The problem is, I'm up half the night composing, because that's what I really want to do. In the daytime, I, I go and work at a department store, and then I come here at night. Rather sad plight. Mm. Often makes me have a... Uh, makes you forgetful. Yes, forgetful. I suppose uh, you sometimes have a dreadful temper, too. Oh, it's fierce. Just fierce. I sometimes have a, a tendency to say things that I, I regret. Forgiven. Happy anniversary, Mrs. Miles. Happy anniversary, Harry. Headlining in Bordeaux. That's right, Jack. But the pay was so low, I couldn't afford to light my cigar. <laughs> the number one song of 1920 was, uh, was, uh, it, uh, it uh, was called, uh... Here's the Japanese man on with it. Thank you. 
1922, they invented the commercial. I mean, that's what they tell me because, you know, I, I wasn't born yet. Well, go ahead, will you? Somebody has to pay the bills. <laughs> movie star was Will Rogers. The first airplane flight from New York to Los Angeles took 26 hours and 50 minutes. Oh, goodness. We're only over Cleveland and we've run out of booze. <laughs> For the heaven's sake, let's Charleston! Friendship down the drain. <laughs> and in 1924, the year my wife had the good fortune to babysit for me, the biggest hit on Broadway was. No, no, Annette. Quite agree that liberty, permitted in the right degree, produces sweeter harmony between a man and a wife. But your words sound very strange. Well, the world has seen a change. Oh, you wanted any girl so just forget. Capote was born and his mother had a great influence on him. Oh, well, that, that's absolutely correct. Mumsy called me Truman because she thought that I might go into politics. <laughs> Now, 
lost speakeasies were getting fancy and becoming nightclubs. Jace? Have you got a table for two? No. We only got a little table for one. Oh. I'll take it. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Here. Here. In 1925, the Kirsch hat was very big. Since we're so early, you just swam the English channel. But what took you so long? Well, the customs man stopped me in the middle and went through my trunk. Happy New Year. Yeah, the country was doing crazy things just for the sake of doing them. Yeah, I'll see, Presidential candidate Al Smith plays golf with Babe Ruth and wins, but loses the presidency to Herbert Hoover. That was also the year that television was first demonstrated. How sweet it's going to be! Mm. <laughs> well, sure, sound came in in 1928, and Al Jolson made the jazz singer. But the biggest thing in westerns with the advent of sound was the singing cowboy. Here's a scene from the Dancing Sagebrush, starring Buck McCoy. Hey, Buck, Buck, the bad boys have come up from the Indian territories. Holy golly! Yeah, what's that got? What's that got to do with me? Turn it, boy. They burned down your ranch house. Oh golly, no! Yeah, and they poisoned your well. Oh mercy, man! Hey, and they stole all your cattle. Stole all my cattle. Yeah, and they shot your favorite horse. Oh golly, God! And here's the pinch of buckets. They kidnapped your wife. Well, no, no, no double side winding yes, poke. That's all kept in its mouth. Hey, before you go, Buck, how about one of your songs? Oh, sure, I always got one. <laughs> the trail to you. In 1928, Broadway's biggest hit starred Eddie Cantor in Make and Whoopie. Another bride, another Jew, another sunny honeymoon, another season, another reason to make it whoopie. A lot of shoes, a lot of rice, a lot of rice. The groom's so nervous, he answers his twice. He answers twice, it's really killing that he's so willing to make a beat. Picture a little love nest. Nine. 
not so happy New Year. No. The market crashed and Wall Street laid an egg. Oh, woe is me. Once I built a railroad, made it run, made it race against time. Can you spare a dime? Say once in your package shoes, he will swell. Oh, that Yankee doodly dog. Once I did it once, that party to hell. Tommy. Huh? Yeah. I don't think I know. I don't think I know. Oh, I don't you remember, buddy? Buddy, I was... I was your pal. Pal? Oh, your pal? I don't... I don't... Your brother! Can you spare a dime? I don't... I don't know who you are. But the songwriters tried to lift the spirits of the country with tunes like this. So long, sad times, so long, bad times, we are rid of you at last. Howdy, gay times, cloudy, gray times, now you are a thing I'm having you back on the Yes, show, it has been. Actually, it's the closest thing I've done to my beat the clock guesting. <laughs> my dear, I am as always your obedient slave, and all you need to beckon, and I will be at your side. That's all I have to do. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> and Dick, Tommy, thanks to you two for being with us this week. My dear, both my brother and myself and our bequest sell your complaint and ambiguous serfs. <laughs> I'm not finished. Oh. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Just say good night. Uh -huh. Good night, Tom. <laughs> good night, Rich. Good night, Alice. Good night, good night everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Time not to go.